This is a video to support a course that I'm teaching in introductory proof writing, and this is the end of a little section on mathematical logic. Here we're gonna look at quantifiers and negations of statements. So there are two main quantifiers. There's the for all quantifier, which means something is true for all elements of a given set or things that have a certain property. And generally that's written as for all, for every, or this symbol right here, which is just read either for all or for every. And then there's another quantifier known as there exists. And this means something is true for at least one element of a set or at least one thing that has some certain property. And that's usually written as there exists, there is, or this backwards E. So you just read that as, again, there exists or there is. And we'll probably see this a little bit more later, but sometimes there'll be this notion of a there exists a unique something. And sometimes that's denoted by uh, there exists symbols like symbol like this, and then an exclamation point. So if you guys ever see that, that means there exists a unique blah. Okay, then next, the negation rules go like this. So we've already seen that under negations, ands turn into ors ors turn into ands. Well, under negations, for alls are gonna turn into there exists. So if something is not true for all certain elements, well then that means it's false for at least one certain thing. And then there exists turn into for alls. So if something is true for some certain single object, then negating that means that it's gonna be false for all certain things. Okay, then next, if we negate this implication statement, it's a bit tricky, but it goes like this. So the implication or the conditional statement P implies Q is negated as P and not Q. So notice this right-hand side, P would be true, but Q would be false which is not allowed under this implication. And if you draw the truth tables for each side of this like little negation, you'll see that they're exactly opposite. Okay, now I wanna run through some examples. So what we'll do is start with a sentence, turn it into symbolic logic, negate it via symbolic logic, and then turn it back into an English sentence. So we'll start with this sentence right here, which says for every prime P, the square root of P is irrational. So this is a true statement. So here we're gonna write it like this. So for all primes P, and so we don't have a shorthand for primes, and as you'll see, we won't have a shorthand for every single thing, so we'll use English words as necessary. We wanna say the square root of P is irrational, so we'll say the square root of P is not an element of the rationals. That would maybe be a way of writing this. Now let's go ahead and negate this. So we're negating a true statement. Well, that should give us a false statement. So let's see, we would have there exists a prime P such that the square root of P is a rational number. So that would be the negation of the statement here. So notice the for all turned into there exists and then we negated this not being in the rationals as being in the rationals. So now let's turn this back into an English sentence. So there is a prime P such that square root of P is rational. So like I said, we just negated a true statement so we ended up with a false statement. So I wanna point out that these two are the same and they are true, and these two are the same and they are false, and they are ne the negation of these guys up here. Okay, let's maybe look at another example. For our next example, we're gonna start with a statement that is false. That is, for every integer n, 2n plus one is even. So like I said, that is a false statement for sure, because we know that 2n plus one is odd. And evenness and oddness of numbers is disjoint, unlike for functions, where you can have something is neither. Okay, so let's turn this into symbolic logic. So this would, sh would say, for all n in the integers, we have 2n plus one is even. So notice we don't really change what's happening over there on the right, but maybe we could say it like this. 
Okay, so now let's negate this by changing the for all to there exists. So there exists a, an integer n such that 2n plus 1 is odd. Well, what did we do here? Well, something not being even is most definitely being odd in the numbers. Now let's turn this into a English sentence. So there is an integer n such that 2n plus 1 is odd. So like I said, we started off with a false statement. We definitely finished off with a true statement. In fact, this is true for all integers n, but that makes it true for at least one integer n. So like I said, these two statements are the same. These two statements are the same. We know that these two statements up here are false, and these two statements down here are true. Okay, so we're gonna look at maybe two more. So next we wanna look at this statement which is equivalent to showing that the irrational numbers are dense in the real numbers. Okay, so between any two rational numbers, a and b, where I've ordered it as a is less than b, there is an irrational number. So let's turn this into symbolic logic here. So notice this any two rational numbers is really a for all statement. Okay, so let's write this down. So this says for all a and b in the rationals, and this is satisfying the rule that a is less than b. There exists an irrational number, we'll call it x, and we'll write it as x is not in the rationals. And it's gotta satisfy the rule that it's between a and b. So we'll write that in the following way. So a is less than x is less than b. So that would be the symbolic logic version of this sentence up here. So like I said, these two are the same, and we know that this is a true statement by something about the density of the irrationals and the reals. Okay, now let's negate this statement. That's gonna give us a false statement. So the for alls are gonna turn into there exists. So let's see, there exists A and B, which are rational numbers with A less than B, such that for all X, which are not rational numbers, X is less than A or X is bigger than B. So let's maybe talk our way through that. So we've gotta be careful about exactly what we are negating. So we're not negating the fact that A and B are rational numbers or that X is an irrational number. We're in fact negating this end statement right here, which is X is between A and B. But if X is between A and B, well then that means that X is greater than A and less than B but that and statement will negate to an or statement like this right here, okay? And then notice the for all turned into the there exists just like as we said before. Okay, now let's maybe turn this statement into uh, words. So let's say there are rational numbers A and B such that there are no irrational numbers between them. So that would maybe be a suitable way of writing this thing in symbolic logic into English. So, like I just said, those two are equivalent statements, and this statement is false because it's the negation of a true statement. Okay, let's clean this up and we'll look at one more. So we're gonna finish this off with a classic theorem from Calculus One, which you might see proven in Calculus One, but definitely in some sort of real analysis class. So it's the mean value theorem. So it says, if F is continuous on the closed interval AB and differentiable on the corresponding open interval AB, then there is a C on the open interval A, B, such that F prime of C is equal to F of B minus F of A over B minus A. So in other words, there is a place where the instant rate of change is equal to that average rate of change. Okay, so just like we did in all the other examples, what we wanna do here is translate this into symbolic logic and then negate it and then translate it back into English. So the mean value theorem is true, so when we negate it, we will get something that is false. 
Okay, so let's make this translation. So here we'll see that F needs to be continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval. So let's see how that goes. So F is continuous on the closed interval. Maybe we'll put that in parentheses. And F is differentiable. I'll shorten that to differentiable like this on the corresponding open interval. So there we've got the and statement, that's our hypothesis. But then that is implying something which we see by the fact that this is an if then statement. So that's gonna imply the following. So there exists a C on this open interval A, B, such that F prime of C is equal to F of B minus F of A over B minus A. Okay, good, so that's the setup we have. So let's maybe color code this a little bit. So we're really taking all of this stuff which is in the yellow brackets, and then we have this, maybe I'll color this yellow implication arrow. So that's gonna imply all of these things in the yellow brackets down here. So we have a P implies Q situation. This would be like P right here this hypothesis statement, and this would be like Q right here. This would be our conclusion statement. So now we want to negate this, and we negate this using the rule over here. So P implies Q will become P and not Q. So let's see how that goes. So we'll have P, that's going to be F is continuous on our closed interval A, B, and this thing right here, F is differentiable on our corresponding open interval A, B. So like I said, that's our P statement, which we'll put that in these yellow brackets. Then we need to have AND, so we'll maybe do that with a yellow AND symbol. We need NOT Q. So that means we need to negate this right here. So that would go in the following way, that there exists will turn into a for all. So for all C on the open interval A, B, F prime of C is not equal to F of B minus F of A over B minus A. Good, so that would be the negation of this statement. Notice it's exactly what we need. This is P and this guy right here is not Q. So now we can maybe write this back into a sentence. That sentence would look something like this. There is a function f continuous on our closed interval, differentiable on our open interval, such that f prime of c is not equal to f of b minus f of a over B minus A for all C on this open interval A, B. That would be maybe one way to write this symbolic logic into English. Okay, that's a good place to stop.